Oh, Father, which art in heaven, the creator of the heavens and the earth, thank you for this uh, very hour that uh, you have given unto us to study your word once again. I'm praying that uh, you may take charge and control of every equipment, the network, and Lord, the words that I shall speak, that they may be words which are acceptable in thy sight. And as we share in thy word, Help us to be blessed more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Welcome, brothers and sisters, wherever you are. And uh, I welcome you to number seven in our presentation uh, of Revelation chapter 14, the three angels' messages. And uh, I pray... And believe that uh, the Lord is blessing us abundantly through these presentations. Uh, so far, I'm blessed and uh, there are some things that the Lord is speaking to my heart and to my life which uh, I have to consider and uh, give my life wholly unto Him so that He may have His way. Number seven, if any man worship the beast, let us enter into the presentation of today this is the third angel's message a fearful message and uh, it's a fearful message to those who accepts the system of the beast and uh, gives the life to it but the third angel's message is a rather uh, a love letter to those who love the Lord because it is the message of uh, justification uh, by faith. Uh, it is uh, justification by faith and uh, I like to just start with this uh, quote on uh, the third angel's message, what it is before we look at uh, something about this message uh, we understand the history of Minneapolis and uh, what the Lord wanted to do to this church I have done a revelation on church history and on that message and I won't go into it but uh, I just like uh, to point something that uh, the, the, the third angel's message is justification by faith, but we have dwelt on other things and uh, they have taken more of our time rather than what we should be learning. And uh, this is what uh, we read about the third angel's message because we are looking at uh, if any man uh, uh, worships the beast. But first things first. Several, several have written to me inquiring if the message of justification by faith is the third angel's message. And I have answered, it is the third angel's message in verity. This message was to bring more prominently before the world the uplifted Savior, the sacrifice for the sins of the world. It presented justification through faith in the surety. It invited the people to receive the righteousness of Christ, which is made manifest in the obedience of to all the commandments of God. Many had lost sight of Jesus. They needed to have their eyes directed to the divine person, to his divine person, his merits, and his changeless love for the human family. All power is given unto into his hands that he may dispend rich gifts unto men, imparting the priceless gift of his own righteousness to the helpless human agent. This is the message that God commanded to be given to the world. It is the third angel's message which is to be proclaimed with a loud voice and attended with the pouring of his spirit in large measure. The uplifted Savior is to appear in his efficacious work as the lamb slain sitting upon the throne to dispense the priceless covenant blessings, the benefit he died to purchase for every soul who should believe on him. John could not express that love in words. It was too, so, too deep, too broad. He calls upon the human family to behold it. 
Christ is pleading for the church in the heavenly courts above, pleading for those who, for whom he paid the redemption price of his own life blood. Centuries, ages can never diminish the efficacy of this atoning sacrifice. The message of the gospel of his grace was to be given to the church in clear and distinct lines that the world should no longer say that seventh day Adventists talk the law, the law, but do not teach or believe Christ. Um, we are told the efficacy of the blood of Christ was to be presented to the people with freshness and power that their faith may might lay hold upon its merits. For years, the church has been looking to man and expecting much from man, but not looking to Jesus, in whom our hopes of eternal lives are, life are centered. Therefore, God gave to his servants a testimony that presented the truth as it is in Jesus, which is the third angel's message in clear, distinct lines. And so, uh, the third angel's message is the message of justification by faith. And while the message is going on into the world, there is another cry if any man receives, if any man worships the beast. Why would people worship the beast? Because they don't have fully trust in the Savior Jesus Christ. While Christ is inviting us to receive of his righteousness freely, the man of sin, uh, through uh, looking unto man, uh, makes people worship the beast because they fear that this and that will happen. So, uh, on the other side, it is justification, justification by faith. Come and believe on Jesus Christ, you will be saved, and he'll give you power to overcome all sins and be obedient to his commandments. On the other side, do something so that you may survive. So, righteousness by faith, pitting against righteousness by works. And that is why we are, are told that righteousness by works cannot enter anyone anywhere. That is why we are being told that let us not worship the beast. Let us not be afraid that this and that will happen to us. And so try to uh, solve things in our own way and at the end of the day be trembling upon the commandments of God. Why do the people come to a point that, um, that they worship the beast? Look at this. Why do men come to at a point that uh, they worship the beast? Because they have not done the necessary preparations. We are told, thus the world will become mine. This is certain boasting in the worshipping of the beast. I'll be the ruler of the earth, the prince of the world. I'll so control the minds under my power that God's Sabbath shall be a special object of content, a sign. I'll make the observance of the seventh day a sign of disloyalty to the authorities of the earth. Human laws will be made so stringent that men and women will not dare to observe the seventh day uh, Sabbath. For fear of wanting food and clothing, they will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth will be holy under my dominion. So the people fear that the, they will lack food and clothing and they go about worshipping the beast. But uh, the book of Isaiah tells us that uh, those who are saved by justification by faith, Isaiah chapter 33 verses 16, hear what God tells us. For those who have trusted in the Lord, this is what he says in the book of Isaiah chapter uh, 33 uh, verses uh, 16 an assurance he that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly he that despiseth the gain of oppression that shaketh his hands from holding of breath that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil he shall dwell on high his place of defense shall be the nations of rock Bread shall be given him, his waters shall be sure. So if any person decides to worship the beast, it is not because 
God cannot provide for his children. It is just because they don't trust in God, in God implicitly. So we are told if anyone worships the beast, but we want to see what are some of the things that um, this beast power has done and people have been confused by them and the Lord is uh, bringing the truth back so that we may not find ourselves in the worship of the beast. The beast system, the false system of worship has counterfeited the sanctuary of the Lord. They have counterfeited it is sacrifice. They have counterfeited the law of God. They have counterfeited his priesthood. They have counterfeited his mediation, a counterfeit Christ, and a counterfeit way of salvation. This is why we are being told that if any man worships the beast, then he will be lost because everything is a counterfeit of what is true. And we want to look at these things in their minute uh, way. We want to look at these things in a minute way. What is the Lord speaking to us? Because we find that um, the man of sin, he has counterfeited many things. Let us, uh, uh, I'll just go back to uh, these things. Number one, the counterfeiting of the sanctuary. And uh, why is the lesson of the sanctuary so important? Why is this lesson of the sanctuary so important? Uh, I'd like to show you something that makes this lesson so important that if you fail to understand it, then you end up worshipping the beast and not receiving uh, a salvation. Uh, why is this uh, message of the sanctuary so important? We are told, and in a little while I'll be able to give you this uh, uh, quote. This is in uh, Someone in Talks, Volume 1, page 344. Uh, this is someone and talks. Bear with me for a moment. Someone and talks, volume one. Page three hundred and forty-four, paragraph two. I want you to see why this lesson of the sanctuary is so important unto us. In a representation which passed before me, I saw a certain work being done by medical missionary workers. Our ministering brethren were looking on, watching what was being done, but they did not seem to understand. The foundation of our faith, which was established by so much prayer, such an earnest searching of the scriptures, was being taken down pillar by pillar. Our faith was to have nothing to rest upon. The sanctuary was gone. The atonement was gone. I realized that something must be done. The battle nearly killed me. I saw what was coming in and I saw that our brethren were blind. They did not realize the danger. Our young people especially were in danger. They delighted in the beautiful representation god in the flower god in the leaf god in the tree but if god be in these things why not worship them now this is a history of uh, kellogg and his pantheistic ideas and his trinitarian beliefs and uh, the point i wanted to bring about is uh, the sanctuary was gone when the sanctuary is gone then there is no atonement atonement is gone and so the man of sin has uh the man of sin sorry the man of sin has uh, counterfeited the sanctuary 
counterfeited the sacrifices, the law in the sanctuary, the priesthood, the mediation, Christ, and the way of salvation. And so when the sanctuary is counterfeited and it's messed up, brothers and sisters, then atonement is gone. We, we don't have anything. And so if any man worships the beast, if anyone gets uh, 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 deceived in, the, in this system, let them understand that there is no atonement at all. Continued on. So we look at uh, what he has done in the sanctuary, the blueprint of earth final movie. So uh, man was created upright in the image of God and in his likeness. But in Genesis chapter 3, the devil uh, was able to uh, deceive Adam and Eve and they partook of the fruit and they lost their innocence and the likeness of God. And so God says that make me a sanctuary that I might dwell among you according to the pattern which I have showed you. So, and I dealt uh, the other time with uh, give glory to him where actually our body is uh, the temple of God and it must be built according to the pattern. But the enemy of the souls have obliterated the, the, the true light of the sanctuary. And uh, these are the things that he has done. When, when you come to the sanctuary, uh, sacrifice of Christ uh, is cast down, replaced by indulgences. That is what he has done. In the Eucharist, the power of the priest is the power of the divine person, for the transubstantiation of the bread requires as much power as the creation of the world. Thus the priest may be called the creator of the creator. Can you imagine the dignity of priesthood by Ligari, page 33? Can you imagine that uh, these guys can create a sacrifice? And so if you are in this system, know that you are in a system where the creature can create the creator who is Jesus Christ. These are some of the blasphemies that should make us cringe at this system of worship. If any man worships the beast. Another thing, uh, uh, baptism has been replaced by infant sprinkling and we shall see that. And then uh, number three, Word of God cast down, replaced by church tradition. Canon 14, we prohibit also that the laity should not be permitted to have the books of the Old or New Testament. We most strictly forbid their having any translation of these books. The Church Council of Toulouse, 200, 1229 AD. So if we shall not partake of the bread on our own self, how shall we be helped in our salvation? Shall anyone else eat the bread for us and we be filled. So uh, this is a counterfeit a system of worship and we are being told that if any man worships the beast. And so uh, number four, Christ's meditation cast down replaced by confessional booth and we shall be seeing this. We are told in, uh, we are told by William Doyle, shall I be a priest, page uh, 14 and 15. The poor sinner kneels at his confessor's feet. He knows he is not speaking to an ordinary man, but to another Christ. He hears the words, I absolve thy sins, and the highest load of sins drops from his soul forever. Brothers and sisters, I saw the sanctuary was gone and the atonement was gone. Can we be part of this system and be saved? Can our churches get into ecumenism with such a system of worship and be saved? We are told it's only fallen churches that lessens their distance from uh, 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 this kind of uh, system. Signs of the time. Can we clasp hands with this system and then say we are safe? No way, brothers and sisters. The Lord has pronounced a curse upon those who take from or add to the scriptures. The great I am has decided what shall constitute the rule of faith and doctrine. And he has designed that the Bible shall be a household book. And this system is saying that no one should have the scriptures. The church that holds the word of God is irreconci 
irreconcilably separated from Rome. Protestants were once thus apart from this great church of apostates, but they have approached more nearly to her and are still in the path of reconciliation to the church of Rome. Rome never changes. Her principles have not altered in the least. She has not lessened the breach between herself and Protestants. They have done all the advancing, but what does this uh, argue for the Protestantism of this day? It is the rejection of the Bible truth which makes men approach to infidelity. It is a backsliding church that lessens the distance between itself and the purpose. Do you hear that? And so, if such a system that says that uh, we confess to man as another Christ is the system that we clasp hand with, if any man worships the beast, these are the things that we are talking about, he shall receive of the plagues. We read again that um, in the book Great Controversy, that um, in a great controversy 566.1 we are studying the word of the lord protestants have tampered with and patronized popery they have made compromises and concession which papists themselves are surprised to see and fail to understand men are closing their eyes to the real character of the romanism and the dangers to be apprehended from her supremacy the people need to be aroused to resist the advantage of this most dangerous foe to civil and religious liberty continue on so we see light of the church cast down replaced by dark ages so the sanctuary has been attacked by satan by this bestial power and we are told if any man worships the beast, because if you espouse uh, uh, the, 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 the religious system, uh, the religious way of this system, then the sanctuary is gone and the atonement is gone. And that is why we are being told if any man does that. So uh, God says in Exodus chapter 25, that verse 30, that and thou shalt set upon the table of shewbread before me always. But what has the man of sin done? He has set up traditions on that table and thou shalt command the children of israel that they bring the pure oil olive beaten for the light to cause the lamb burn always we have to have the holy spirit guiding us in every word that is written but we are told that uh, we must wait for somebody to translate for us the bible we must wait for somebody to to uh tell us what the bible means this does not only happen in uh, sunday churches even in the seventh day adventist churches and when Aaron lightened the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generation. So instead of men praying to God, they pray to the saints, they pray to the priests, they pray to the fathers. And so the ministry of Jesus Christ in the heavenly sanctuary was forgotten, and it is forgotten even until today under this sanctuary attack. It is eclipsed by this new deceptive despotic church and state power. And so we read in the book, Great Controversy, this beautiful book. The ascension of the Roman church to power marked the beginning of the Dark Ages. As her power increased, the darkness deepened. And so people lost sight of the sanctuary and they have lost sight of atonement. In the end, their sins cannot be forgiven and then they cannot enter heaven. Faith was transferred from Christ, the true foundation, to the Pope of Rome. Great Conrovers 55. Continued on, instead of trusting in the Son of God for forgiveness of sins and for eternal salvation, the people looked to the Pope and to the priest and prelates to whom he delegated authority. Shifting. Uh, remember, I, I would want... I just want us to remember this thing as even we read uh, 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 these beautiful uh, things that we are reading. That uh, uh, I want you to see this. That uh, people had lost sight of Jesus Christ.
people had lost so sight of Jesus Christ and now they were looking to men. The quote that we started with. This is um, Evangelism, page uh, 190, paragraph 4. Look at this. We are told that uh, instead of trusting in the Son of God for forgiveness of sins and for eternal salvation, the people look to the Pope and to the priest and prelates to him he delegated authority. The prophet tells us, Many had lost sight of Jesus. They needed to have their eyes directed to his divine person, his merits and his changeless love for the human family. People didn't have to look to man. They had to look to Jesus Christ because he is the only one who has divinity that can uh, give us divine nature and be acceptable before God. Our righteousness is filthy rags. It cannot be presented before God. And if uh, we will gather all these uh, things that we call uh, righteousness and present it before heaven. What will happen? What will actually happen if we gather? Because look at uh, the 1888 message. Because we are told men were looking at men and they thought that they could be accepted in this way. And so uh, when we look at men and try to manufacture our righteousness and uh, present it before heaven as a uh, part of the bargain for us entering heaven, what will happen? 1888, 816 paragraph 1. I ask, how can I present this master as it is? The Lord Jesus imparts all the powers, all the grace, all the penitent, all the inclination, all the pardon of sins in presenting his righteousness for man to grasp by living faith, which is also the gift of God. If you will gather together everything that is good and holy and noble and lovely in man, and then present the subject to the angels of God as acting a part in the salvation of the human soul or in merit, the proposition will be rejected as treason. Standing in the presence of their creator and looking upon the unsurpassed glory which enshrouds his person, they are looking upon the Lamb of God given from the foundation of the world to a life of humiliation, to be rejected of sinful men, to be despised, to be crucified. Who can measure the infinity of the sacrifice? And so, uh, this indulgence that this beast power sells as conferring righteousness to men and praying for the dead saints in uh, in purgatory so that they may be admitted to heaven and paying all these sums. Brothers and sisters, if any man worships the beast, we are warned. This is a warning. We are only to partake of the righteousness of Jesus Christ and not the righteousness of the beast power. They were taught that the Pope was their earthly mediator and that none could approach God except through him. While we are being told that there is only one mediator. Let us look at these verses because we cannot just keep over this matter and uh, um, uh, and talk about the purpose. We must prove it from the Bible. Who is the only mediator between man and God? The book of uh, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, it should be chapter 2, verses Five, 1 Timothy 2, 5. The Bible says that uh, <clears throat> for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man is Christ Jesus. But people were taught that the Pope was their earthly mediator and that none could approach God except through him. And again, look at uh, this uh, this is John chapter 14, verse 6 then. John chapter 14, verse 6. This one, we should be able to chorus it. But I'll just put there for the sake of the viewers so that you may know that actually if there is any 
brother or sister from the Catholic Church, they, they should understand what we are talking about. We are told, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So if any man worships the beast, if anyone buys into these ideas, brothers and sisters, they are buying into fables. They are not buying into truth. And further that, he stood in the place of God to them and was therefore to be implicitly obeyed. Now, there is no way we are told that we are implicitly to obey man. Peter says, when the laws of men clash with the laws of God, in the book of Acts 5, uh, 29. When the laws of men clash with the laws of God, what are we supposed to do? 528, the priests are telling this Peter, saying, Did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in his name, the name of Jesus? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostle answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. This idea of implicitly obeying man, it is foreign to the Bible. However high the calling of a man may be, we are to implicitly obey God, not man. And so we told for hundreds of years the circulation of the Bible was prohibited. Remember we are looking at number seven in the series of the three angels messages of Revelation chapter 14 and we have reached at the third angels message if any man worships the beast. For a hundred of years, the circulation of the Bible was prohibited. The people were forbidden to read it or to have it in their own houses, and unprincipled priests and prelates interpreted it, its teachings to sustain their pretensions. Thus, the Pope came to be almost universally acknowledged as the vice grant of God on earth, endowed with authority over church and state. Great controversy, page 51. The lava. The lava which represented baptism and uh, foot washing, daily washing of the world, was replaced by infant baptism. This led to the union of church and state. Every human, a member of church and citizen of the state. They were baptized paganism. Baptism is for those who understand that they are giving their life to God, not infants and sprinkling. It should be under running water. Pope John Paul II on Tuesday told Roman Catholics to seek forgiveness through the church and not directly from God. The requirement for confessing sin through priests is one of the fundamental principles of Roman Catholicism, the Associate Press, December 11, 1984. Can you imagine this? So we see the confessional is a two apartment structure. They, they have imitated the the sanctuary service and uh, thought to bring another service that uh, really creates an eclipse of the true sanctuary services that uh, are going on in heaven so they, they have like a most holy place and before it we have the altar of incense and somebody is doing what confessing to a priest this is how the structure is built the sanctuary under attack. The sanctuary, when it is attacked, atonement is gone. And there is no salvation. If any man worships the beast, it is the presentation. And out of them, Daniel chapter 9, came forth a little horn, which we are talking about, the pagan Rome, which gave its power to the purple Rome, which works exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And we find that it came and conquered the pleasant land and even crucified, helped the Jewish to crucify Jesus Christ. And so in the east, uh, in the pleasant land and in the south. The pagan Roman Empire falls in 476 AD, but then we have the purple power rising. Revelation chapter 13 verse 1. I saw a beast coming out of the sea and it is head was wounded but the head healed the wound healed and all the world followed after it and so the lord is 
really warning us if anyone is caught up in this pagan purple 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 rome is a uh, pagan rome baptized it carries everything that has to do with pagan rome pagan rome gave its power seat and great authority to purple rome and daniel 8 and it works great even to the host of heaven god's people according to ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 this is a vertical movement into the religious world you see that pagan rome it is moving horizontally while conquering until it stands in pleasant land which is israel and then after that it starts going upward by crucifying jesus christ and then when it is power is taken away the papal rome uh, takes over and it does away with the, the sanctuary in heaven so the pagan rome does away with the sanctuary on the earth by even participating in crucifying jesus christ and incorporating paganism into christianity by constantine and then the papal rome now obliterates the view of the heavenly sanctuary if anyone worships the beast if anyone clasps hands with the papacy the sanctuary is gone the atonement is gone and it casts down some of the host and uh, uh some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them daniel 8 uh 8 verses 10 and god's people stars god's ministers host is god's people and stars are god's ministers according to revelation here he magnified himself even to the prince of host and we are told in daniel chapter 8 uh the prince is jesus christ how did he magnify even uh, himself even to the prince of the host by claiming to have powers of god the pope exalted himself vertically into the religious world and so history in 494 AD, the Pope claims to wield uh, two swords, which swords the civil power and ecclesiastical power over all the world. And then in 508, the Pope gains the power, uh, the sword of civil uh, of civil power to use. Clovis, king of France, gained a victory over one of the Aryan Christian nations and gave Roman Catholicism civil power to use on her part to force other nations to her side in 538 AD, the pope gains the sword of ecclesiastical power after defeating the after uh, uh defeating these Aryan um tribes 533 the eastern roman emperor justinian proclaims the bishop of rome the head of all the holy churches church and state if any man worship the beast in 538 AD, there was an enforced Sunday law in all the Christian world, in all the Christian world, all the world worshipping the Trinity God. In 495, the Pope claims to be the vicar of Christ. Where is that found in the Bible? So the Pope exalted himself vertically in the religious world by putting himself in the place of Jesus Christ on the earth. And in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, we are told who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, all that is worshipped, so that he has, he as a God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, yet just a man. So by this arrogant claims, the Roman pontiffs vaulted at once over the throne of kings, what else, over every local church and church leader, over every person on planet earth and how was he able to do this the overthrow of the bible based education to humanistic education using the jesuits known as the founder of the society of jesus the jesuits order under the commission of rome in 1540 ignatius loyola formed a counter reformation in every sphere that would be loyal to the roman hierarchy he changed the syllabus to be more humanistic oriented with what we may call today new age beliefs. He devised the separation of children from parents by the system of universities and boarding school. And not only that, we are told in great controversy throughout Christendom, Protestantism was menaced by formidable force. I wish I could talk about separating children from their parents by a system of universities and boarding schools where luther says that the the universities 
at the gates to hell. So, throughout Christendom, Protestantism was menaced by formidable force. The first triumph of the Reformation passed, Rome summoned new forces hoping to accomplish destruction. At this time, the order of the Jesuits was created, the most cruel and scrupulous and powerful of all the champions of popper, cut off from earthly ties and human interests, dead to the claims of natural affection, reason and conscience, wholly silent, they knew no rule, no tie, but that of their order, and no duty but to extend it its power. The gospel of Christ had enabled its adherents to meet danger and endure suffering, and dismayed by cold, hunger, toil, and poverty to uphold the ban of truth in face of the rack, the dungeon, and the stake. To combat these forces, Jesuitism inspired its followers with a fanatism that enabled them to endure like dangers and to oppose to the power of truth all the weapons of deception. There was no crime too great for them to commit, no deception too base for them to practice, no disguise too difficult for them to assume. Vowed to perpetual poverty and humility, it was their studied aim to secure wealth and power to be devoted to the overthrow of Protestantism and the establishment of the papal supremacy. When appearing as members of their order, they, were, they wore a garb of sanctity visiting prisons and hospitals, ministering to the sick and the poor, professing to have renowned the world and bearing the sacred name of Jesus, who went about doing good. But under this blameless exterior, the most criminal and deadly purposes were often concealed. It was a fundamental principle of the order that the end justifies the means. By this code, lying, theft, perjury, assassination were not only pardonable but commendable. When they served the interest of the church, under various disguises, the Jesuits worked their way into offices of state, climbing up to be the counselors of kings and shaping the policy of nations. They became servants to act as spies upon their masters. They established colleges for the sons of princes. Now, listen, just a little bit, let us track down. Known as the founder of the site of Jesus, the Jesuits order, under the commission of Rome in 1550, Ignatius Loyola formed a counter-reformation in every sphere that would be loyal to the Roman hierarchy. He changed the syllabus to be more humanistic oriented with what we may call today New Age beliefs. He devised the separation of children from parents by the system of universities and boarding schools. Listen to what the great controversy says. That uh, they established colleges for the sons of princes and nobles, and schools for the common people and the children of protestant parents who are drawn into an observant of popish rights brothers and sisters you heard it there they separated children from parents by these boarding things and so the children of the protestant parents were drawn to observe popish rights because they spend a lot of time with this fallen system of worship remember we are talking about if any man worship the beast and we have let just our children just go where they can go to learn brothers and sisters this should not be you cannot give satan to teach your child eight hours of the day you have this child two hours of the day and think you can make a child a Christian. No way. It cannot happen. All the outward pomp and display of the Romish worship was brought to bear to confuse the mind and dazzle and captivate the imagination. And thus the liberty for which the fathers had toiled and bled was betrayed by the sons. The Jesuits rapidly spread themselves over Europe and wherever they went, they have followed a revival of popper. Now, I'm coming to this thing of education. Here is the Catholic Jesuit author the initiator says, My son, here and to four, here to four you have been taught to act the dissembler among the reformers to be a reformer, among the Calvinists to be a Calvinist, among the Protestants to be a Protestant, and obtaining their confidence to seek even to preach from their pulpits. You have been taught your duty as a spy to ingratiate yourself into the confidence of heretics of every class and character as well as among the schools 
and the universities. I hope Seventh Day Adventists are getting the message clearly and the people of the world. Ignatius Loyola institutes this boarding schools to separate children from the parents and then they come up with syllabuses that really indoctrinate the mind of the children so that the children instead of continuing to be protestants they become jesuits we are told by 1556 three-fourths of the society membership were dedicated in 46 jesuit colleges everything the things that the children are reading are things authored by infidels people who are part of this beast power if any man worships the beast so in these colleges they initiated learning against learning you think that you are getting an education when you are actually just preparing to reject god to indoctrinating minds with the learning of illuminated humanism as opposed to the learning of scripture this network will expand by 1749 to 669 colleges 176 seminaries where bible are taught our pastors are taught from uh, these people and when they come to the churches the thing they say you will think that these people are mad 60 houses of study and 24 universities partly or wholly under jesuit direction rulers of evil by after page 65 and now when luther begins reformation he knows what the jesuits have done and what the roman system had done and then this is what the luther does in order to begin protestantism this is what uh, uh, Luther immediately uh, does actually look and you see when we talk about this thing people think that uh, we are calling people out of school there's nothing like calling people out of school in we shouldn't be calling people out of school when we talk about these things we are talking about having a higher education than what these Jesuit schools can uh, offer and so because luther understood what the this bestial power had done this is what he decided to do we read the early reformers realized that they could not hope to succeed if their children were educated by roman catholic teachers you have just read if any man worships the beast and one of the uh, 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 the 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 plan that was put in place is to get the children from their parents and staff them in boarding school so that they may be separated and be taught not to be protestants so the early reformers realized they could not hope to succeed if their children were educated by roman catholic teachers luther says that the bible must be studied teachers must be provided schools must be established he felt that to strengthen the to strengthen the reformation it was requisite to work on the young to improve schools and to propagate through Christendom the knowledge necessary for a profound study of the Holy Scriptures. He says, this accordingly was one of the objects of his life. He saw it in particular at the period which we have reached and wrote the councillors of all the cities of Germany calling on them to found Christian school. D. Abgins, History of Reformation, Book 10, Chapter 9. He continues to say, education in the formation of the beast and image. And we are saying, if any man worships the beast. The early reformers found it necessary to have their own courses of study, textbooks, teachers, methods, principles, etc. They separated themselves completely from the popular schools of the day. It required courage, brothers and sisters. I have to put this in a clear color. Let me highlight this very well so that we may not miss it. We are living in serious times. We cannot afford to joke around. We are told that uh, it required courage. It required courage. Continue to roll. Read. It required courage and faith in those days to take such a stand, and it will, meaning in the future, 
during the loud cry require more even more courage and faith for those who are preparing for translation to take the stand which the testimonies are pleading for them to take they knew that if their children should go to the schools where the popular education was given they will receive the mark of the purpose if any man worship the beast is our presentation or those who are living up to the light at the present time will see even more clearly that if their children continue to go to the popular schools they will receive such a principles as will compel them to assist in giving life to the image to the beast i'll highlight this also these are serious things i'll highlight this If there was a time to be serious, this is the time. Anyone who has a knowledge of the third angel's message, it is not the first, the, second, the third angel's message, and who will take the trouble to examine the studies and methods of the popular system of education can see that, that the books are filled with those errors which will oblige those who are receiving the education from them to take the dreadful step which will bring upon the world a religious and civil darkness greater than has ever known before and so what is the solution prophet what is the solution she doesn't leave us without a solution she says complete separation the command found in revelation 18 4 come out of her my people may means to come out of those institutions which will place in the minds of our young people principles which are up to make the join the uh, uh, class of worshippers of which we read in 2 Timothy 3 5 having a form of goldness but denying the power thereof. As faithful watchmen we should be just as desirous of getting our children out of the popular schools as we are to call the older people out of the popular churches. The popular churches are only a product of world education so to get at the root of the matter we must separate ourselves from that which creates the condition which all the religious world at present finds itself and what is this condition all the world wandered after the beast if any man worships the beast this is what we are talking about and so there's so much that is happening and before we can carry the three angels messages to the world listen to what we are told before we can do this work special testimonies series b uh, 11 if we are going to be successful in carrying the three angels messages to the world before we can carry the message of present truth in all its fullness to other countries we must first break every yoke we must come into the line of true education walking in the wisdom of god and not in the wisdom of the world god calls for messengers will be true reformers we must educate educate to prepare a people will and understand the message and then give the message to the world we cannot understand this message when we are filled with false education that has been introduced to us may the lord have mercy on us and so we see this lips that he's making let me backtrack a minute so let us see this long jump where it is headed with all these things we, by those arrogant claims, the Roman pontiffs vaulted at once over the throne of kings and then over every local church and church leader, over every person on the planet Earth, and then captured everyone with their Greek humanistic uh, uh, education that was caught from Alexandria, and then they vaulted even to the seat of God or if you like it, the seeds of God. And they say, we hold upon this earth, the place of God Almighty. Encyclical letter of Leo, uh, the 13th, page 304. 
God himself is obliged to abide by the judgment of his priest and either not to pardon or to pardon. Or either not to pardon or to pardon. Dignity and duties of the priest, volume 12, page 2. According as they refuse or give absolution, the sentence of the priest precedes and God subscribes to it. Dignity and duties of the priest, page, volume 12, page 2. In public ecclesiastical law, volume 2, page 142, the church may, by divine right, confiscate the property of heretics, imprison their persons, and condemn them to the flames. Where is that written in the word of God? The Pope's arrogant claims and his power over church and state will establish the Roman brand of Christianity as the dominant religion in the Roman Empire. Brothers and sisters, if any man worships the beast. And so by 538 AD, the knowledge of Christ's daily ministration in the heavenly sanctuary was eclipsed. Saturn was then successful in maintaining this eclipse of Christ during the 1260 years of papal supremacy from 538 to 1798. God's people cannot be separated from the sanctuary. What affects the sanctuary affects them. And so when it is done away, the sanctuary when it is gone, then atonement is gone if any man worships the beast. Great Controversy 596, the Roman Church reserves to the clergy the right to interpret scriptures on the ground that ecclesiastics alone are competent to explain God's word. It is withheld from the common people. Heresy. Through the Reformation, though, Reforma though the Reformation gave the scriptures to all, yet the self-same principle which was maintained by Rome prevents multitudes in Protestant churches from searching the Bible for themselves. They, they go to church to have good times celebrate, listen to the pastor crack jokes, display their fashions and do all these things while their souls are at stake. Men and women are at their last hours of probation while they, yet they, they are stupid to these things. They don't understand a thing. They, they are in a stupor, in a slumber. How can they be woken up? They are taught to accept his teachings as interpreted by the church. And there are thousands who they are receiving nothing, however plain revealing the scripture that is contrary to their creed or to the established teaching of their church. There should be no time longer, but in the days of the seventh trumpet. Now, we want to enter into this last segment and we have seen what the purpose is doing. What is the duty of the people of God then? Because... We don't want just to know what the powers of darkness are involved in. We want to know what is our duty. Because we are told that if any man worship the beast, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God shall be finished. As he hath declared to his servants, the prophets, Revelation 10, 6 and 7. What is this mystery? This mystery among the Gentiles, which is, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ must be formed within uh, uh, the hope of glory. Brethren and sisters, we must come to a point that we yield ourselves not to be controlled by anything that comes from the papal power and the false Protestantism. Be it in our dress, be it in our music, be it in our health, be it in our education, our Every system of our life must be refined so that Christ may have a place that he may have his abode in our hearts. The finishing of the gospel is when the high priest cleanses the sanctuary on the day of atonement. Now, we talk about the cleansing of the sanctuary. Yes, we know we have a sanctuary in heaven, but what is being cleansed? It is the sins of the people. As, as long as we are still sending sins in heaven, the sanctuary is being cleansed. But this work is not to go on forever. We must come to a point that Christ is formed within. And so all these things that has been lost by the papal power, that has been hijacked, must be restored. The children of God must take their Bibles and leave the creeds, burn them throw them in the dustbin and be able to be led by the Holy Spirit to obey 
the truth. And so, uh, well, I'll pass over this because we have read. So, there must be tidings of trouble. To trouble who? To trouble this system. And uh, you see, in these tidings, the great controversy must be spoken about. The sanctuary message must be brought to the people in clear note so that the trumpet may sound with a certain note. People may not be confused. The investigative judgment message must be given. The seventh day Sabbath, the seal of God message. Righteousness by faith, which is uh, opposed to righteousness by works, warning against the mark of the beast. These tidings of trouble, these tidings to awake the people from their slumber must be given to the world. The health message must be given. The second advent message must be given. While the devil would want to hold people in sin a longer, and if he can be able to do that, he knows that they, they are lost. And so we need to awake from our sleep. The third angel's message must be given with a loud cry. Our Character must go before our lips. We must show that we have been saved from this system. And so, and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast <coughs> and his image, <coughs> sorry, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. This is the end of them that worship the beast. And so, we are told, how can we stand? What, what, are, what are some of our duties in such a time as this? What will help us to stand? We see that our healthcare has been taken over, our dress industry, our music, our food factory, everything. The beast has taken over it. And so what is the Lord calling us to do at such a time as this in new fields where the work of god has yet to be established medical missionaries work is to be done this work removes prejudice and prepares the way for the proclamation of what the third angel's message which is saying if any man worships the beast it is the means by which doors are opened for the entrance of the special truth for this time medical missionary work and the gospel are one if united, they make a complete whole. The sanitariums that shall be established are to be God's memorials agencies in the conversion of many souls. Our sanitariums have been established for the purpose of preparing a people for the second coming of our Lord and Savior. There will be no work to be done very soon, but the work in the line of medical missionary. A great work must be done all through the world and let no one conclude that because the end is near, there is no need of special effort to build up the various institutions as the cause shall demand. You are not to know the day or the hour of the Lord's appearing, for this has not been revealed. And let none speculate on that which, not, uh, which has not been given him to understand. Let everyone work upon that which has been placed in his hands, doing the daily duties that God requires. When the Lord shall bid us make no further effort to build meeting houses and establish schools, sanitariums and publishing institutions, it will be time for us to fold our hands and let the Lord close up the work. But now is our opportunity to show our zeal for God and love for humanity. I was asked to go and explain why. If the Lord was coming so soon, the publishing work should need a such a large building. I say, you that have ears, I want you to hear. It is because the Lord is coming that we want a building as big as this is. And more than that, it will grow larger as the work progress. The Lord has a work to do in the world. The message must go to all parts of the earth. It is because we believe this that we have started this work. We are going to deny 
ourselves. And then this beautiful last two uh, slides. We see what the purpose is doing. We see what the enemy is doing. We see the forces of the world are aligning themselves together to go uh, against God in rebellion. But the Christians also should be doing things that will help them to stand. Because all the systems of this world have been attacked, God has raised the Seventh day Adventists to start institutions that will help people to stand. God's purpose in giving the third angel's message to the world is to prepare people to stand true to him during the investigative judgment. This is the purpose for which we establish and maintain our publishing houses, our schools, our sanitarium, hygienic restaurant, treatment rooms, and food factories. This is our purpose in carrying forward every line of our work in this course, 1MR 28. And lastly, one more important thing. The sanitarium was brought into existence to call men to a knowledge of the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent to educate as Christ himself was directed, teaching them the laws of the kingdom of God. This is and always will be the only true higher education. Praise the Lord. While the system of the beast is in the false worship of a false God, a false Christ, a false mediator, and all this stuff, let me go where I started as we finish. The beast system, it has a counterfeit sanctuary. Church has usurped the place of Christ through tabernacle in heaven by claiming to forgive sin through the confession. It has counterfeited the sacrifice. Mass has usurped the place of Christ through once for all sacrifice. It has counterfeited the law, creator's name, from the fourth commandment it has uh, usurped the place of christ as our high priest this system has done away with the mediation of christ and it has proclaimed itself the infallible teacher of divine truth and the true success of christ on earth <coughs> while christ says that how about when the holy spirit come he shall uh, 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 guide you into all truth. This bestial system that we are being warned, if any man worship the beast, it has usurped the place of salvation by uh, God's free grace. And so we are being told that the sanitarium was brought into existence to call men to a knowledge of the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent to educate as Christ himself was directed teaching them the laws of the kingdom of God. This is and always will be the only true higher education. So our work is to restore the true worship of God, to restore the sanctuary. No wonder we are told unto 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. The place of worship, who to worship, when to worship, how to worship this is the cleansing of the sanctuary and god's purpose of giving the third angel's message to the world is to prepare a people to stand true to him during the investigative judgment how do we stand true to him and give a knowledge of the only true god and jesus christ whom he has sent it is to establish and maintain publishing houses, schools, sanitarium, hygienic restaurants, treatment rooms, and food factories. And you see, if we are not doing these things, we are preparing to fall during investigative judgment. May the good Lord continue to teach us and give us the strength to implement these things that we are learning. And I praise the Lord that there is nothing that he has told his children to do that he cannot give them strength to do it. May the good Lord be with us and may he continue directing our ways 
so that we may continue worshiping him in truth and in the spirit let us pray heavenly father we see what the enemy has done in thy sanctuary david says that uh, we don't see the prophet anymore we don't see our symbols there is perpetual desolation in the sanctuary but if the foundations be destroyed what shall the righteous do we are told that stand ye in the crossroad and seek the ancient ways and be able to follow them some said they will not but father those who love you they'll be able to follow them thank you because you are raising a people a generation that will be true to the principle as the needle is to the pole your name be glorified and magnified in christ jesus name i pray amen Thank you.